Welcome to Macro Monday on Investec Focus Radio SA, a podcast about what's driving global and local markets. I'm Chris Holdsworth, Chief Investment Strategist at Investec Wealth and Investment. Every Monday morning, I'll update you on key developments from the past week and what you need to know about the week ahead. If you'd prefer to watch a video with the graphs and charts I referred to in the podcast, just go to investec.com forward slash Macro Monday. This week, we'll have a look at the latest with regards to the US elections. We'll have a look at the Fed pivot and what that's meant for markets. And finally, we'll look at inflation, which is surprised on the downside in South Africa. We're going to start off with the elections. At this point, according to the betting market, it's still pretty close. Kamala Harris is about a 52% chance of winning. Trump has a 47% chance of winning, according to the betting market. So there's a gap between them, but not one that's insurmountable. It's still pretty close. We're going to have to monitor this very closely over the coming few months. We are seeing policy announcements from both camps, which should allow us to start to shape the potential impact of either candidate being elected. Broadly speaking, Kamala Harris would like an increase in taxes on companies, taxes on unrealized capital gains for a subset of the people with more than $100 million. And Trump very clearly would like an increase in tariffs. Now the candidate appears too concerned at this point around the, the deficit, which next year is likely to be between 6 and 7%, irrespective of which candidate is elected, with debt to GDP already being over 100%. It's likely to become an issue for markets at some point in the medium term, maybe not the short term, but it is interesting that neither candidate is focused on addressing what is likely to become an issue at some point. Switching to the Fed, the Fed very clearly has sent a message over the past week. Firstly, there were the minutes from the latest meeting, which came out midweek. Um, In those minutes, the Fed very clearly stated that they were increasingly concerned around the status of the labor market and less concerned around inflation. And that would allow them to pivot in effect and cut in the not too distant future. We can see an analysis of statements from FOMC officials in public engagements. This is data provided by Bloomberg. And of late, you can see that there's been a pretty sizable shift uh, towards a dovish stance. And that was cemented in the Jackson Hole conference on Friday. And Powell came through very clearly indicating that the next move for the Fed is down. It's just a question of scale. And the market at this point is pricing in a lot. Based on the interest rate market at the moment in the US, the market is pricing in 100 basis points worth of cuts in the next three meetings by year end. So call it a 50 and then a 25 and a 25, followed by another five 25 basis points cuts over next year. Now, there's only eight meetings next year. So in effect, the market is saying over the coming three meetings, 100 basis points worth of cuts. And then over the eight subsequent to that, which counts for next year, there'll be 125 basis points of cuts, all told 225 basis points of cuts by the end of next year. That's very optimistic. And while we do expect that there will be cuts from the Fed, we don't think that they're going to be at the sort of scale that's currently priced into the market. And there is scope for some disappointment. We hope you're finding this podcast valuable. If you are, please take a moment to rate Investec Focus Radio SA on your podcast platform. And to make sure you don't miss an episode, please remember to follow us. Switching to US economic data of late, it's broadly speaking disappointed, which may well have been one of the reasons why the Fed has pivoted. The Bloomberg Economic Surprise Index is just a bit off multi-year lows. That hasn't concerned the market at all. We've seen a continuing rally for the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 equal weighted index, despite what has been pretty disappointing economic data in aggregate. I think there's two potential reasons for this rally. The first we've addressed already, which is the Fed pivot, a material shift in sentiment from the Fed, which has spurred the market. But in addition to that, we're seeing very little sign of concern from companies. We've seen quite a few companies comment that there is a slowdown, but very few commenting that they expect a recession. And the consensus view at the moment is that there's just a 30% chance of recession in the U.S. over the coming year. So despite the Fed getting increasingly concerned about the labor market, there's very little concern within market participants around the possibility of a recession within the next 12 months. It must be said the bond market has a different view. You can translate the slope of the yield curve into a probability of recession in the next 12 months. It's work that Bloomberg has done. At the moment, if you average that result for different slopes, you get to about a 75% chance of recession in the US. So the bond market is saying there is reason for concern, a 75% chance of recession. 
But the consensus view is that there's only a 30% chance and companies aren't telling us that they're experiencing a recessionary-like environment. And as a result, we've seen a pretty buoyant market. Switching to South Africa, South African inflation surprise on the downside came out last week at 4.6%. The consensus was 4.8%. We've plugged in the updated numbers into our model along with an expected cut to the fuel price at the end of the month of about 80 cents per litre. And our model now suggests in October, inflation gets down to 3.3%. And thereafter, it picks up a little bit, but still remains below the middle of the central bank target. So just like the Fed is due to cut, we think the Saab is likely to cut two in September. We think they will cut two in December as well. And we are expecting a range of consecutive 25 of cuts from the Saab, given how low inflation is likely to be by Q4 this year. And that does also suggest that we're likely to see some pretty sizable downward revisions to inflation expectations, both from the Saab at the next NPC meeting and from consensus over the coming few weeks. And as a result, we should start to see a sizable shift in expectations with regards to the interest rate policy too. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week. That's all for this episode. Do tune in next week for more investment insights from me, Chris Holdsworth, and the Investec Wealth and Investment team. If you haven't yet added us to your podcast feed, you can subscribe to Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you listen. And please take a minute to rate our podcast so we can surface this content to the broader investment community. If you want to see the graphs that are referenced in the podcast, you can watch a video version of this recording at investec.com forward slash macro monday. The views expressed are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily represent the views of Investec Wealth and Investment International and should not be taken as advice, guidance or recommendation. Investec Wealth and Investment International, a member of the JSE Equity, Equity Derivatives, Currency Derivatives, Bond Derivatives and Interest Rate Derivatives Markets, an authorized financial services provider and a registered credit provider.